Lord, we thank you for bringing us together today for, uh, uh, for us to come together to remember what our task given to us is, and that's to do the work of the Cherokee people in this room. We thank you for uh, helping us all be here safely. We ask that you take us all home safely. And we are so grateful for the leadership of our health team to, uh, and our administration for leading us through this trying times, and we are so grateful to be on this side of it. Lord, bless us, bless our efforts, help us to seek you in all we do. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please. Yes, sir. Rex Jordan. Here. E.O. Smith. Here. Keith Austin. Here. Danny Callison. Here. Julia Coates. Sean Crittenden. Here. Joe Deer. Here. Mike Dobbins. Here. Here. Johnny Kidwell. Here. Daryl Legg. Here. Wes Nofire. Dora Petskowski. Here. Joshua Sam. Here. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Melvina Shot Pouch. Candessa Tihi. Aye. Victoria Vesquez. Aye. We have one. Thank you. Need approval of the minutes from the March 14th meeting. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Reports. Management resources, Mr. David Moore. Good afternoon. Good to see everyone here. Uh, Y'all have a report. If I can answer any questions, I'd be more than happy to either answer them or get you an answer. Anybody got any questions for, for Mr. Moore? You're up. <laughs> I had a constituent uh, asking me a bunch of questions, and um, I know you don't call me Harley, but we're going to talk about pine trees. For a second. <laughs> but uh, I'm going I'm to start this all over again. No, I'm not. No. Yeah. He was wondering if... Um, there might be some way to, you know, he was asking if we could use those trees, and I told him, you know, that it was not price or not cost effective to yeah. do, you know, have them hauled and harvest them and all those things. Well, he said, what about pallets? I said, because there's a big need for pallets nowadays. Could are the trees big enough to make pallets out of? So I said, I have no clue. So, um, oh. do with it what you will, but I have no. Clue what it takes to build a pallet. Yeah, I'll have to pass that to, to Secretary of Natural Resources. All right, sounds <laughs> but, good. I just want, just want to pass that on. He didn't hear me. <laughs> He's not listening. <laughs> but, yeah, you, you are right that? about the, the, the cost is what's the biggest deal about transportation. And right now you all know what the diesel prices are, so it's probably even way off base. Yep. All right, thank you. Any other questions for David? Thank you, sir. Thank you all very you much. Next up, real estate services. I think Joel's going to take that. Good afternoon, everyone. Ginger is not with us today. She's uh, off for a few days, so she sent me down here to answer any questions you, you guys might have, except for from Sean. <laughs> There's a plan, and he's not going to ask it. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Sean? Mr. Mr. Bean, I just always appreciate you answering my phone calls and uh, giving us good info. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other, any other questions? Thanks, Joel. Thank you, guys. Secretary of Natural Resources and Environmental Programs, Chad Horschel. Uh, good afternoon. I think you have a copy of the en Environmental Programs report. If there's any questions on that before I kind of highlight some uh, items from my group. Anybody have any questions for the envir Environmental? All right, if I may, um, yes. update on our seed bank uh, project. I, I know last month I purported that we were in the process of doing our mail out. Uh, we had our first round of mailings uh, completed with over 6,300 packages, which is which is quite a bit. Uh, we were able to open the online portal again for just a very brief window of time for 
um, some additional seeds that we were able to make available and we're almost done with mailing that out so when we're done with this project at probably the end of, by the end of this month we'll have about 10,000 packages of seeds which is the, the largest stat that we've ever been able to deliver and about probably 30 percent increase from where we were last year at this time so it's a, a very popular program and one we continue to uh, try to uh, you know build up as we have more interest from year to year uh, touching briefly on hunting and fishing uh, this past weekend was the first weekend for youth hunt it's since I think it closed at midnight on uh, on Sunday so it was the first youth turkey hunt of the year and about a week from now we'll have the first um, turkey season that runs from the April 16th through May 16th so we'll be getting back into Cherokee Nation citizens hunting and fishing um, with their tribal citizenship cards in the absence of a compact uh, in, in highlighting specifically on that item you know the online harvest system that we have for reporting wildlife game is, is available on the Gadugi portal we were able to stand that up uh, the very first of this year when there was about a two-week period of um, uh, white-tailed deer hunting after the compact had expired and so you know, under our code with the revisions that we sent through several months ago it is it is a requirement for into for Cherokee citizens who are hunting and fishing in accordance with our law to um, go to the online portal and harvest or and, and report their wildlife harvest which includes turkey when deer season comes around also now it would also include paddlefish we take that information we um, collect all of the data points that that um, that's required to be reported and we're going to use that to help inform wildlife management plans as we as we go down the road uh, one other item I wanted to mention um, and should be on a, a, a release coming out here pretty soon to the public reminding them of their of their obligation to report to the Gadoogie portal but we have entered into a, a preliminary stages of a collaborative effort with Oklahoma State University um, one of the things that we've noticed over the past several years is a, a pretty significant decline in turkey populations both within our reservation and across the state um, there's a lot of there's a lot of theories have been espoused as to why that is but it's, it's most certainly a problem and I think you see it reflected in um, our bag limits and season dates allowing only one one turkey per year which in the past there was multiples allowed uh, but we're, we're working with Oklahoma State University to conduct uh, tissue samples from turkeys that are harvested within our reservation boundaries so we're going to ask tribal citizens and we should be providing that number of contact information here soon if they want to participate in this study after they harvest a wild turkey and then report it into our system they can reach out to us we'll go we'll go out to them collect a tissue sample grab that and then send it to um, the folks at OSU and then they're going to collect the genetics of that to try to understand what's impacting turkey populations which is uh, just as relevant as it is in our reservation boundaries as it is in other part of the state so it's still early um, in that project I don't know what what to expect in terms of participation from tribal citizens but that is something that um, we're excited about and hopefully we can help bring some um, some relief to the to the issues that we're having another um, wildlife uh, area of focus I wanted to highlight is our, our youth fishing outreach initiative uh, we put together some funding from my group to um, purchase fishing poles for you know kids all throughout the reservation boundaries and right now we're looking at about I think we have 2,500 and looking at purchasing more and attending public events we have a fishing derbies that are coming up I think there's one coming up in Roland soon but we're we're working at working with communities to identify where these types of derbies are and, and hopefully as this pilot project progresses we can engage directly with the schools uh, to try to put fishing poles in, in, in kids hands all throughout the reservation boundaries and um, you know all tribal citizens regardless of age have the ability to, to fish within our reservation boundaries and with, with using their citizenship card information uh, those are that's the main issues that I have to, to highlight and I know we're moving into Earth Week here at the end of this month so we have some events that we're still trying to dial in the date but I could give you folks an update on that uh, when I return back in May if there's any questions Danny Ch Chad have you guys uh, I, I know there's several reports out about the uh, the predators being the problem with the turkeys being an old outdoors guy myself um, as as the tribe gonna has have they thought about since we're not the the are we managing our own conservation stuff now uh, so one of the ways up north they done that was uh, put bounties on the uh, the predators like the raccoons uh, the foxes the uh, the coyotes of course the coyotes and the and the raccoons being the big deal that's eating the eggs and, and different things in the deal have we thought about maybe doing that? Yeah, we're, we're looking at um, 
at ways that we can help conserve wildlife resources within within our reservation boundaries. You know, in the turkey issue, like you mentioned, there's a lot of different uh, a lot of different beliefs as to to why this happened. There's you know we had some irregular weather weather patterns over the past couple of years, some extreme cold periods that we uh, did wouldn't typically see the the increase in predators, and so part of um, you know what this tissue sample study they're doing is is try to understand just generally what what's the health of the population so you can kind of determine what the cause is of the decline so <clears throat> pardon me that is something that we're looking at in terms of overall wildlife management uh, and I don't have anything specifically to report but that is something we're considering and uh, one more question here and you know you told us that in the last five years that we had gotten five million dollars from the federal fund to help with the conservation that we gave to the wildlife department are we still getting that and, and what are we doing with that or are we just hopeful that, that someday we'll get back to normal again? So in, in terms of the five million it was when we're speaking about the the compact so the compact the way that that worked is um, under the under federal rule regulations there's a certain amount of funding that's issued per state per capita based on license sold. The minimum amount of license required that the state had to realize in order to draw down those funds was one dollar for, for, for hunting, one dollar for fishing, so two dollars for a combination license. Uh, over the course of our compact, because we were able to leverage the federal funding allocation by the, the sheer increase in volume of licenses in the state, uh, it, it, it brought in about 30 to 32 million dollars in excess of that actually over the life of that compact. Uh, unfortunately, that money was made available uh, because of our unique compacting relationship. That's why it made sense and worked well, because a lot of those resources were deployed within our reservation boundaries um, over over the over the lifespan of that compact. So, in the absence of the compact, currently that money uh, will not be available for future years, even though it does operate about two years in arrears. So, the compact is is is, is no, over now, but the revenue is not going to decrease for the state until probably 2024 because they, they do a two-year look-back period because it takes time to certify the actual funding amount from the revenue and all that that's kind of brought in and allocated uh, once a year. So one of the things I am looking at is how can we increase revenue from uh, federal grants for uh, wildlife conservation within the Cherokee Nation boundaries. Hopeful that we'll have funding opportunities down the road and hopeful also that we could perhaps see changes to the um, the Pittman Robinson Act, which was what I referenced, that made the, the funding allocation for the compact work. If they could be an inclusion legislatively for tribes to have access to some of that money, right now it's it's only available to states. So there's a couple of a number of different things that we're looking at um, to see if we can increase revenue. It's somewhat of a new situation and it takes some time. Thank you. Yep. Sean, just sitting here talking, listening to Danny talk about the the coons and coyotes. That'd be that'd be pretty neat, I think, if you did it legally and responsibly, you know, to have the youth like they used to do, you know, get out and go hunting for some coons, and mm. you know, maybe give them a little bit for each pelt and do something with that. And man, that'd be exercise. That just, you know, now there's really no incentive really to go out and do stuff like that. Trapping, mm -hmm. man, that's a that, there's an art to that. Like we got a guy in there that knows how to do that and teaching that and so yeah and those conversations I kind of like the thoughts of our youth getting out there and the little incentive to get out there you know uh, yeah. so much per hide or whatever and but pretty neat yeah and I, pretty I would neat. I would point out that I, you know under our code you know whatever is allowed what's lawful under you yeah. know the existing state bag limit season dates which I believe predator hunting is legal under certain seasons um, and I believe hunting and fur bear trapping is, or fur bear trapping is legal under you know, certain periods of time. One of the things I haven't considered or thought of up to this point about any type of incentive program, uh, that's something I'm going to take to my group and, and have them take a look at. You know, I think they'll have to see how that would fit and turn the greater scheme of right. wildlife you gotta, management. You've got to be responsible, and right. that's not even touching on the old hog problem we've got. Yeah. You know, just, and now, did someone tell me, you know, you talk to a lot of people, again, if we're just talking, uh, can you, there's people that eat that hog, ain't there? And uh, is, are we looking at anything like that or are there too many, too many regulations or? No, I mean, in terms of the wild, wild hog, um, I don't know, I know that we have a pilot program. Um, we've recently staffed on my end uh, a position to help support that project for control efforts to minimize the you know, prevalence of wild hogs in, within our reservation boundaries, particularly on tribal land. 
I don't know the details of that plan in, in terms of whether the, the um, captured or, or, or harvested wild hog would be utilized for food. I know that there's some, I think you have to be careful, you know, with, 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 with how you deliver that out to individuals. Yeah, um, well, I'd be interested on the science of that. I've heard, sure. oh, I wouldn't touch that. They eat this and that. Well, I've seen some tame hogs yeah. eat some pretty bad stuff myself, you yeah. know. But uh, <laughs> I'd be interested in that science, sure enough. You we're always talking about food and stuff. And I don't think we've ever really addressed it much in here. But uh, that may be way out in left field, but, I mean, that's pork. If the science would let us do it uh, legally and responsibly. Uh, is that crazy there? No, we haven't heard But, I mean, let's wrap that sausage up and start passing it out or just... With the note on there, say, hey, this is wild hog, and there you go. <laughs> hey, I've never, ever tasted a dandy wild hog. It's the cleanest meat I've ever tasted. Not mm. wild. But we, we get us some science on that. I mean, even if it's bad news, don't eat it or whatever. But I I really am interested in in that, Chad. Yeah, and, and, I, and I appreciate you sharing that. I'll take that back and take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Novana. Um, Chat on. Uh, I know the state uh, gives license to like to rehabilitate injured animals, or you can keep a license to keep them. Do we have anything like that in our system? Not, not currently. So um, we have the framework in place with the legislative act amending the hunting and fishing code that this body approved uh -huh. some months ago. What that contemplates for for issues unique or or, or, or that you've raised that are. Uh -huh. um, you know, somewhat not not in the mainstream. You know, we could we could establish regulations to mm -hmm. um, govern how that activity would work within okay. the reservation boundaries, and so that's something I can take a look at. Okay, this lady was interested in it. She uh, uh, see animal. I mean, I think they kind of do, <laughs> but you know, she want to do it legally or whatever. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, let, let me take a look at that, and I can okay. I can reach out to you offline right. and get Thank some information. Daryl, Chad, uh, before COVID stuff hit, uh, we have a veterinarian in Salisaw, and he rehabilitates eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking at partnering with a company from Dubai about building a facility on our property, as long as we would, and and he would still be the doctor, the vet that would, could come out and and, but. Can you just, like, like, within a month or two, but just kind of revisit that in your mind about how you think something like that would work, and can we do it? Uh, he's got one eagle that, he, that you've asked him to put down, but he ain't going to put him down. He's going to let him live right there in his facility. But he had, I think, five at one time in a small facility, and I think the Osage has one, mm -hmm. maybe the Chickasaws. But if those facilities are full, then there's nowhere else for him to take these eagles and he actually just rehabilitated a golden eagle, which is rare for here, and turned it loose. So, but if that's something we could think about, you know, yeah. and revisit that later. I, I can take a look at that. I will say, you know, the, the, from what I recall, historically on the AV, which you're referring to as an aviary um, uh, concept, is it, it was there was a considerable amount of expense to it at the time it was considered um, in the past with with. Um, a lack of federal funding available at that particular time. So I don't know if those circumstances are changed, but I can look into it. Yo. You know, the, I've been talking to quite a few people that, that live as turkey hunting, and they say there's no young turkeys. And they say the reason is is the hogs and the black-headed vultures are eating all the eggs. That, but the ones that hunt real seriously, there's no young turkeys. So that's something that... Till we have this hog problem, we won't have any turkeys. You know, even on our land down there, uh, by Aikens, the turkey population is down. And there's not that many hogs in there. But two weeks ago, in Weber Falls Bottom, we were eating some hogs that weighed about 150 pounds that they had killed that day. And they had that in Kool-Aid, and it was really good. <laughs> 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 but... Uh, so, but they, if you get that from 80 to 150 pounds, you're not going to get a better eating that, really, because you hadn't hit that wild stage yet, you know, and hadn't started it, but it's good. Is there a, a new toll-free number that they can 
report poaching? Um, we, I mean, you can call at any time and report poaching either to the, the, the Cherokee Nation Marshal Service. They have a 1-800 number. I don't have that in front of me, but I can get that to you uh, because poaching is a crime. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a wildlife conservation manager uh, and, and support staff that do nothing but help enforce our, our wildlife code and, and administ in an administrative capacity. And I can share with you that information that you can reach. It's generally during business hours, uh, and I believe they accept messages later at, or after hours to help resolve any of those issues. So we, we work together with the uh, wildlife conservation marshals that we have at, um, under, under the marshal service to help with the wildlife enforcement in addition to our cross-deputization agreements that we have with the actual Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. So yeah, I can give you a number that you can share if uh, for that purpose if you'd like. Maybe if you could send it to all of us and we could, when people call us, we'll know that we'll report it, you know. Sure. Then, then I, I tell them to call the marshals, but, but the, you know, maybe we need to get a more direct number or something. Sure. I can do that. But anyway, that's it. Any other questions? Mike. You know, it sounds like <clears throat> we're really uh, talking a lot of, about a lot of different things um, that ex that's spanned a lot of different areas as far as, you know, what the state has always done and what we're wanting to do. And um, I know Spoonbill is a monster deal with the state because, you know, a lot of people poach them and take their eggs. I know they have a bad problem with the Russians doing that around here. They really do. Um, and maybe that's something um, at one time the state would clean your spoonbill and they kept the eggs and they were actually getting the money from the eggs. Maybe that's something we might look at one of these days. A lot of money in it, in caviar, Cherokee caviar. But, um, but then you get in the pig, you know, the pig debates and things. And gosh, I've eaten a lot of wild hog and... I don't know if I've ever had a bad one, and I've shot them up to 350. So um, with the problems that people are having on their land, tearing up their land, and, you know, you get in different ways, whether you want to trap or, uh, gosh, if you get a helicopter, I want to be the first one up in there to shoot them out of a helicopter. But, um, but even at that, uh, turkeys. Now, I, I saw a coyote about catch a turkey once, and, it was because the turkey was busy digging and didn't hear him coming, but that's the only reason. But um, I know there's a lot of predators out there that eat the eggs, but the weather is bad, too. I know that uh, several years ago, whenever the weather got really, really bad late, killed about all the quail and the baby quail. Uh, people who had them raised them said it just killed them. They couldn't take it, and they just they were gone. So maybe in the future it may be something to look at to have our own wildlife department. I mean, like the state does, have our own and uh, hire our own people and, and still work with the state and we can mirror what they've done and learn from what they do good and if there's some things they don't do good, then we can, you know, fix it. But um, we're probably coming to the point as a nation is that we're expanding so much, we could probably do that and, and govern ourselves in, in that right. Do you think that's something that I think that's that what, could be. I think that's you know a, a goal that we're working towards. I mean, since um, at least since since I've been in this role, you know, we've we've allocated resources towards expanding our wildlife department. I mean, we actually have a department of wildlife conservation that has a wildlife conservation manager. Uh, right now, I think there's two full-time wildlife technicians, uh, and then a, we're looking soon to fill an intern position. And I and I only see this this department expanding over time, especially as we you know, fully implement a, po a post-compacting world with the state of Oklahoma. And, and as we continue to look for additional funding from the federal governments or by, or by way of grant to help support um, these projects. So yeah, I do, I do see that department expanding over time. Yeah, I think and a lot of times in the council, we don't, we don't know about these things. I mean, I knew there was two marshals who, you know, who took wildlife calls, but I had no clue that, that that's the direction we were going. I didn't know there was an actual conservation department so that's good yes, to hear it's 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 needed yes, sir any other questions for chad eo this little point uh, down at the sequoia refuge there south of vine a few weeks ago they with the helicopter they killed 283 hogs in less than five hours but they tell me that the big hogs here those helicopters coming and they fly they run off and all they're shooting are the young ones because they can't get to the big ones because they're they're smart and they've outlived them, you know. So, but that's a lot of hogs just in a five-hour period. Any other questions for Chad? 
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. No business done. No business done. Next meeting is Monday, May the 16th. I need one more motion. Motion adjourned. Second. Got a motion second. We are adjourned. <laughs>